I was contacted by a co-worker that lives about a mile from me. They let me know about a snowblower that was sitting by the trash cans in their neighborhood. So I went and picked it up, brought it home, and got it working again, but I never got a chance to use it until last year. Unfortunately, something happened to it while in storage, and now I've got some serious issues that won't allow me to use it. In today's video, we look at this Craftsman snowblower and the problem is that it starts and idles just fine. However, if I try to use it to clear the snow, the engine will surge, which is basically when the engine speed is not consistent, but instead wildly changing a few hundred RPMs. Now, I'm going to try and repair this snowblower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work on yours. If things aren't working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it and I'll be glad to answer your questions. In the last video on this blower, I went through the cleaning process on what had to have been one of the dirtiest carbs I've seen in a while. The reason was because I wanted to try and save it, and even though I got it started and running, it wasn't perfect. However, in the time it's been in storage, it's apparently gotten worse. Now, I would normally just start the blower and show you the issue it's having, but since it's been in storage for the last 11 months, I need to go through it first just to make sure it's safe to do so. So what could possibly happen to it while it's in storage? Unfortunately, lots of stuff can happen to it, and it's because it's sitting idle all that time, which means things can rust and seize together. Besides that, if the carb has a fuel leak, the engine oil could be contaminated with gasoline. After moving every lever and turning every dial and pulling on the starter rope, I don't see that anything is stuck and everything works just like it's supposed to. The next item I want to check is of course the oil. Now in the earlier videos, I did change the oil and I'm pretty sure I did not overfill it, but after inspecting this one, it looks to be overfilled which doesn't make any sense. I know it's hard to tell and that's because the dipstick is a shiny metal color and the oil is hard to see when it's fairly new, but the line on the dipstick looks to be about a quarter inch over the letter H. Now is this too much oil? I'm not really sure, but I'd rather not see it over the letter H. So to deal with the extra oil, I'm going to open the fill plug and let any extra oil spill out. Now, I'm not sure if I overfilled it the first time or if the carb was allowing gasoline to flood the engine and it made its way to the oil galley, but for right now, I'm just going to get it to the right level. Besides, if there was gasoline in the oil, it would be floating on top of the oil and doing it this way should drain the gasoline. Now, the oil level is in the middle of the letter H, which is slightly above the marked area, but I'll take that over what it was before. Now, while the blower is on the table, I'm also going to lubricate the wheels. This will keep them working smoothly the next time I have to use it. Now, this isn't necessary, but it is something I like to do because it makes it easier to use, especially for something I use very rarely. I would recommend using a thin lube, and I would avoid a thick grease. The next thing I want to do is to put a small amount of gasoline into the tank and check for leaks. The reason we have to check is because if the carb is empty of fuel, the float inside the carb which controls fuel flow will sometimes get stuck in the down position which will then allow fuel to flood the engine. After a few minutes of waiting, I don't see any fuel leaking from the carb, however that might mean the fuel is leaking into the engine. We'll find out here in a minute after we take the carb off, but first I want to remove the drain bolt and see how well the fuel is getting past the needle and seat. As you can see, it looks like there's a decent flow of fuel coming out of the carb. The gasoline that drained out first was the fuel that was already in the bowl. The rest of the trickle that came out shows the amount of fuel getting past the needle and seat, which looks good to me. I can't tell you what the flow should look like, but it just cannot be a slow trickle. The last thing we need to do is to start it and show you what it's doing.
As you can see and hear, the surging is quite bad, but before we start to dig into the carb or do any diagnostic work, I want to try and start it using the electric start. So what do you think the issue might be? Do you think it's fuel related or perhaps it's an issue with the engine? What I mean by that is that this is an overhead valve engine, so there might be an issue with the valve lash, which is basically the clearance between the top of the valve and the rocker arm. Or do you think there might be an air leak, which would cause even a working carb not to be able to deliver enough fuel to the engine? As you just saw, the engine seems to run okay with a throttle at idle, but once you go above that speed, it starts to surge. I then tried to use the choke to control airflow and fuel delivery, which should have had some effect on the surging, but it didn't, which could point to a carb issue. What I'm going to do is quickly take all the parts off the blower and engine so we can get to the carb. I'll then remove it and take it apart for an inspection. What we're looking for is a partially clogged fuel jet or pilot jet, and then we'll take the emulsion tube out and see if that's clogged as well. Unfortunately, there isn't a fuel shutoff valve on this engine, which isn't needed, but it would make doing the maintenance a lot easier. Now, I would install one, but the fuel line is routed in such a way that putting one on here would be extremely difficult. I know the topic is going to come up about the possibility that the fuel line is collapsed from using ethanol fuel or the fuel filter in the tank being partially clogged, but I'm going to look at the most likely suspect first and then I'll start to consider other possibilities later on. The first part I want to inspect is the pilot jet which is located under the idle set screw. Now when taking this off, count the number of turns it takes to get it free, that way you can put it back on the same way. I know it's hard to see, but the pilot jet is clear. The reason I know this is because I opened this jet up the last time I worked on it. In fact, I opened it up so much that it would be impossible to clog. Besides, if this was clogged, it would mean the main jet was clogged too. That means the next part I need to inspect is the main jet followed by the emulsion tube. After pushing out the emulsion tube, you can see the main passage is extremely wide, which makes it very difficult to clog. However, the smaller openings around it are much easier to clog, but after taking a better look, these are not clogged either. So this is the fuel jet, and as you can see, it's obviously not clogged at all, but what I intend on doing is the same as the pilot jet, which is to enlarge the opening so there's no chance for it to clog. Now after doing it, here's the side by side of them before and after, and you can see what the difference is. Now at this point, the carb will now deliver a lot more fuel than it ever has before. So I did have plans on cleaning this carb and putting it back together, but I really didn't want to mess with it anymore. I just want to get the snowblower working the way it's supposed to without any surging. That means I'm just going to replace the carb for right now. Now I did have intentions on using the original carb, but as you just saw, there was nothing wrong with it, especially because of the modifications I made to it the last time I worked on it. So for me, I really think the carb was having some sort of issue that I just couldn't see, and that's the reason why it wasn't able to give enough fuel to the engine and causing the surging. So if I replace the carb and it's still doing it, then we know it's definitely not the carb that's the problem. And that's the reason I'd rather replace the carb now and not have to worry about doing this job again. Unfortunately, if you've seen my videos before, you'll know that I don't always have the best of luck, so hopefully this one turns out better than the other videos I've made. Once the blower is back together, I'll put some fuel into the tank and then we'll start it up, let it warm up, and hopefully this carb fixes the issue it's having. Otherwise, this may have been a waste of time.
So now I'm pretty frustrated. I figured the new carb was going to fix the surging, but that didn't happen. Even adding fuel to the engine by using the primer didn't get rid of the surging. If I'm not getting enough fuel to the engine, maybe I'm getting too much air. I don't think I've ever had to deal with this type of problem before. Now, I absolutely value your comments and your time, so I'm looking for any advice from anyone watching this video that might be able to help me figure out my issue. So my question is, what else could it possibly be? Maybe the valve lash is the problem, which is something I haven't looked into yet, or maybe the compression is too low. Or do you think there might be an air leak somewhere in the intake, and that's why adding more fuel proved to be ineffective? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.